It was this one's 10th birthday. Where did we go? Where did you request to go for your 10th birthday? I've requested it. You requested it. Wait, I did? Yeah, you did. You're like, I want to go to the water slide place. I can't be starting. Shh. The dads had a request too. So you think I should go on the drop? Yeah. All right, all right. I'm going to have to go on the drop. That's Harper Tones, and we, we got like two generations of friendship here. You'll see Lou and I escape to go metal detecting, but we also have a really good time in the water park too. So let's switch it up a little bit and let's, uh, let's have an adventure. I want to go over there again. Again. Yeah. You hear me, YouTube? Again. Mm. Just for fun. Take exit 3 to merge onto I-278 West towards Ferrazzano Bridge. Now you might have remembered the trip that I took with Philip the Knox to Pennsylvania to Charlie Harley's Farms and uh, it was spectacular. This is part two of that. We meet up with Phil, Charlie, Brian and make some new friends uh, this time. But first, you know, it's my daughter's 10th birthday. We had to go on some water slides. And honestly, that's no problem here. I love Love water slides. I love adventure rides. Those are awesome. Roller coasters and stuff like that. Yeah. Kalahari is a big deal. It's kind of like, dare I say, the Disney of the Northeast. I don't know if it's that popular. But I couldn't believe how many people I saw in a remote part of Pennsylvania. This was really a, a, a great place. And uh, you'll see the inside very soon. They're doing. <laughs> Call him. Okay. He knows what doing. It's time for the water slides. Let's go. We were fine. We were fine. Mr. Tone. Mr. Tone. Yeah. All right. It feels like it's summertime in here. It, it is February. No, it's March now, and uh, there's snow outside, and. What an awesome place. This is an experiment in uh, audience retention. I, I had to take that very seriously after my metal detecting rap career. Um, we're gonna see if, um, if you guys like water slides. So, so yeah, we're, we're gonna go down some of the water slides. We're also going to see how waterproof my phone is. Okay, you just missed the buzzer and now, it's a wave pool. I should be metal detecting right here. Right? Yeah. Gonna have problems digging into the floor. Do you see that drain there? Coincidence? I think not. I mean, you know what happens when people swim. Their rings fall off, jewelry, and they got the wave pool to push it into that basin there. It's like a metal detecting machine. That's what Kalahari is. I'm like this at the beach too. I gotta like ease my way in. Ah! Ah! All right, I, I made it to the deep. I got a man purse to keep my phone dry too. It's cold. Actually, it's not really cold. It's not that bad. <laughs> All right, let me put my man purse away. All right, Mr. Tones is watching his daughter, and uh, we have one of his daughters. We're gonna go down the slide. Let's go. And here we go. That guy's going down the, oh, this is faster than I thought. Whoa! This is faster than I thought, people! Whoa! Are you kidding me? So that is the baddest slide in the place. I have no problem with uh, adventure. <laughs> That's what I do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have somebody film that one. I can't take the camera on. So. 
and then there's this one that one i'm gonna probably take the phone on yeah so you think i should go on the drop yeah all right all right i'm gonna have to go on the drop we are high up and going higher let's go in fact we're going much higher all right this is the monster that we are about to go on Then I went on the same slide with Daniel. I meant to put it in regular video. It uh, wound up being in super slow motion. So we're gonna edit this clip, but it's pretty funny. Here we go. Uh-oh, fat guy just stuck it. You know, Daniel's a smart guy and he has the look of terror because he understands the momentum that happens from having a dad with a belly. And uh, we're going down the slide pretty fast. I always uh, ask them if they want to go metal detecting and they smile at me. It's like, Dad, you know the answer to that. But I'm happy that they like water slides. I love water slides too. And uh, this was just such a fun family trip. Look, look at that face. The ride itself takes maybe about 20 seconds to complete. But uh, this turned into a uh, three or four minute video. Uh, because I had it in that mode on the, the slow motion mode on my camera. But good times. I, if anything, this might have captured some cooler images. <laughs> ah, here we go. And we're done. There was one slide left to conquer. I had to make it rain. Now we were about to metal detect land that was farmland dating back to the early 1700s and of course looking forward to that but Kalahari was awesome. The kids had an absolute blast and uh, it's a great family resort. It's expensive but uh, it was worth every penny I have to say. <laughs> All right, kid, really quick, in a few words, what do you think of uh, Kalahari Water Park and Hotel? Five stars? Five stars? <laughs> yeah. Epic. Hey, Daniel, what'd you think? Great place. And now it's metal detecting time. I really should tell you that the water slide stuff happened on the second day, and uh, we were struggling to get out because of... Uh, check-in and all, all of that. We had to get the families checked in and comfortable and ready to go before uh, Lou and I could uh, disappear and go metal detecting. Just note, this is Lou's car. Look at what he chose to buy, an Equinox. Hi, That's Lou. Right. That's right. We use it and we drive it. Yeah. Yeah. Lou actually didn't bring his uh, Equinox on this trip except for the car. Uh, he swung a legend, and uh, I brought the Manticore and the Deus too. We kind of switched up uh, between those three. Now, I'm going to point you in the direction. I'm going to link this. Heritage Relic Hunters is Charlie's channel, and we came a little bit late, and we missed some of the fireworks, but Charlie, of course, got this on film. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful, sunny day here in Pennsylvania, going out detecting with, with Merle, uh, New York City detecting. Uh, he's coming down in about another half hour, but anyway, I'm all loaded up. Got all my stuff in my truck here. Skies are blue, a lot of rain last night. We'll see if we can find some uh, cool stuff. We're going up in Colonial, 
Berks County, Pennsylvania. So we'll see what happens. Catch you later. Now, this video is going to be linked in its entirety, and I highly recommend that you check it out. But I'm going to show you the main firework that uh, Lou and I missed. And, uh, of course, it was uh, pulled by Philip the Knox. I told him, uh, I said, you got to work hard. You worked hard so far this morning, huh? Working hard. Show me what you found, though. This is what I oh found, John. <laughs> Phil. Oh, uh, Ariel. What, what is that? Is that a, uh, a I'm not two? sure. That's more than a two. I believe it is a two. And you think it's a two? It's so big. That is 1811 we figured out. Yep. Oh my gosh, way to go. You're, hey, I'll tell you what, Phil, your day is, you can go home now, right? Uh, we gotta find some more, pull some more history out of these gum. So at this point, uh, I think we got there at about uh, 12 o'clock. We were supposed to meet them at, uh, it was like nine or 10. I don't remember, <laughs> but we got there. This is the one from Beale. I've never been through a covered bridge. Oh my God. We're going through a covered bridge. It's a wooden bridge. It's made of wood. We're New Yorkers. <laughs> We're New Yorkers, Mr. Tones. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> now now, now, now we're California. Oh my God, this place is gorgeous. Gorgeous. If you eliminate the cars going by and the uh, electric poles, it's like being in the 1700s. You know, the landscape really has Man. not changed very well. much. There's still a lot of farms, and this is something that's like two and a half hours away from New York City. Mr. Towns. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're here with the crew. If everybody could uh, introduce themselves. Mr. The Mr. The Knox. Yep. I'm Mike. Mike. I'm Paul. Paul. All right, Louie. Mr. Tones. Charlie Harley. And Charlie Harley. Brian. And Brian's over here. I don't have a nickname yet. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Big Lou from Kalamazoo. <laughs> you can call me Iron. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I find plenty of that. <laughs> really quickly, it was a very windy day, and uh, I am going to have to narrate uh, over some parts most definitely. Two, I'm so sorry to the other diggers that were there. I did not do a good job of getting them in the video. It was such a wide space. We were all spread out. First signal of the day, 4042. I got an oval on the target trace. It was a shot bullet. 4445. Um, sounds very small. Well, we got something. Uh, rivet, perhaps? I overheard Charlie saying something that uh, really stuck with me. He said, uh, starting last year, uh, the process of tilling a farm, which is kind of the turning the soil, preparing the fields for the next year, really has not happened recently. And that could be a localized thing, um, and it could be a farm-by-farm -farm thing. You might remember in 2022 that gas prices went through the roof, especially after Russia invaded Ukraine. Farmers famously operate on small margins, and some farms, perhaps many farms, have had to cut that step, uh, tilling, out of the process. Now, think about what tilling does for metal detectorists. Listen carefully to this. Now, I own the Manticore, I own the Deus too, and arguably they're great detectors. I have stumped those detectors around iron at very shallow depths, and I have no doubt in the parks that I often metal detect in New York City, if the ground gets stirred, so much more can come to the surface. That's the beauty of metal detecting on a farm. The dirt gets mixed, stuff gets pulled up, other stuff gets pulled down, but in the future, that stuff could get pulled up again. Our absolute best detectors on the market in perfect conditions, low mineralization, maybe you get 15 to 20 inches on a coin-sized target. Farms make that completely irrelevant. You might as well search for the stuff that is closer to the surface because maybe Something gets, uh, something is a modern drop within the last 10 years or so. If the farm is tilled, maybe that gets pushed down. It's really irrelevant. Farms, you dig everything. 
getting a good signal. 7476, only thing this seems surface, but again, if the ground was turned, that's not a bad thing. Let's see what we got. And this is uh, modern. Modern yunk, oh well. Now this farm had an old creek that ran through it and some of the guys were pulling arrowheads uh, from this creek before I was heading in that direction. 60, 61. Well, <laughs> isn't much. Two arrows down, 82. Yeah, this one kind of went back and forth with a iron signal, uh, but it repeated. I dug it, it's iron. Mr. Tones just found something. See what it is, Chief? All right. Great reveal. Is that a knife? It's a knife. DC's a knife. I have You've a got a brush somewhere. Pocket knife. Good stuff. This makes me excited. 66, 69. <laughs> got it. Let's get it. That's a live dick, guys. This is live. Oh, what is this? Ah, it's an old fishing weight. Okay. I just got a modern nickel. Ah. The day was quickly elapsing and I was somewhat regretting my dig everything philosophy. If it beeps and repeats, dig it. And I got uh, a lot of aluminum foil and uh, can slaw to this point. But uh, you know what? I still committed to that. Okay, we might have just found a bullet. Yeah, we did. This one's modern though. All right, so this seems surface. That's the only thing that makes me skeptical. Surface, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but it was plowed the field, so you don't know. Correct. Oh, look at that. There oh, we go. Buckle. There we go. Surface buckle. Surface buckle. Okay. All right, we're on the board with old stuff. There Let's go. That signal is proof right there that depth does not matter on a farm. It could be something that is surface, that is hundreds of years old, and something that is brand new, that is deep. Now, they hadn't plowed in the past year, but still, that doesn't mean that they didn't plow in years before this. So this was something that somebody missed. Solid 49. It is round on the target trace. Ah. The fireworks didn't start for me yet, but uh, I was just enjoying there. That was just like a painted landscape. Just look at how beautiful it is. This was a 35 and got something caught in here. That's pretty cool. Look at this. This is a clock gear, perhaps. Maybe a uh, spur for a mouse horse. I don't know. Cool. 28, 29, 30. Okay, what do we have here? It is a shot bullet. This is one of the older ones, though. All right, so I go through a bunch of targets that are just junk. Let's go through that quick. Ah, it's some copper wire. It is a piece of iron, but with a round top, that's why. Getting repeating signal. This is flat on the target trace. Okay, I see something. What in the world is this? This is like an eye. That is really cool. Look at that. That's an eyeball. Whoa, that might be the coolest find of the day. Yeah, when you start finding stuff like this and like this, that's stuff that people missed and you are due. You just gotta keep digging. This is cool, what is it? I appreciate you ID people. If you could let me know what this is, that would be greatly appreciated. The mouse is Chinese star, I already have ID'd. Okay, I don't even have my pinpointer on, and I see, I got a 27 here, and this was sticking out of the surface, and it is a modern nickel. Ay caramba. 40, 41. 
I see roundness. I have a feeling that this is going to be a shot. Bullet shell? Yes, it is. Right. Here's the signal of the day. 88, 90, 90. I'm calling over Mr. Tones. This is, this do, is do that again. 94. Turn. It's, it's mid 90s. I think it's right on the surface, but as you know, they turn this. Let's go, baby. Watch it be a modern quarter. <laughs> oh, it's deeper than I. Oh. Could be something else there. No, right here. This is coin sized. Please do. We're right near a house, so. Could be a nice coin. Oh, it's a I quarter size. I see it. It is quarter size. And it's a quarter. <laughs> It's a quarter. <laughs> yeah. ah. In case if you're just joining us at this point, you fast forwarded to this point, let me summarize. We got about 30 cents of the Kalahari trip paid for and a mouse's Chinese star. Yes, consistent target. We just made a change. We're going dais. Go. Best signal of the day. Right here. 86 and deep, right by the road. Hey, there we go. I don't mean that seriously. Rest in peace to this field. We are changing sights. Man, I hope there wasn't too much wind in this video, but uh, I have a feeling that there was. I, I just narrated over it, but you probably know that already. If you... quarter mile, slight right on the Pennsylvania Yes, we know, North. Siri, thank you. All right, anywho, yeah, let's go to the next site. All right, this next part is a little bit windy. I'm going to leave it on uh, for a reason. There was a lot of EMI. You might have seen the power lines that we were passing, and uh, this was definitely affecting the detectors and where people chose to detect in the field. But you know what? There's one of my detectors that is really, really good at mitigating electromagnetic interference, and it is the Manticore. <laughs> EMI here, perhaps I should go Equinox, not Equinox, Manticore, but I'm getting a repeat here, 92, 88, go. Oh, we got something. <laughs> we got a quarter. Oh, okay. Quarter? It's a regular quarter. Yeah. There's another one there or is that the imprint? No, that's the plug. That's the uh, imprint. Yeah. All right, Dan. Okay, this is what we'll do. If you can't hear it, listen to this EMI. Take this back. <laughs> okay, oh, and wait, you want really? the dais? Give, put it back on the way it was before. Yep, we'll do. It is. It is. Yep. Why is it so jittery? Because of the power lines. Oh, then forget about it. Bring it back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all around power lines here. It could be because of this, though. I don't think so. Um, the woods, it was like that. Oh, no, you meant the equinox. Yeah. Manticore. The All right, there are all sorts of power lines here. This is where the manticore can shine. If I could ever cross this street. <laughs> Let's go. All right, this is getting signals. 88, 92. Pretty deep. Are you kidding me? What the heck is this? Is this a tool of some sort? Okay, that's pretty epic. It's like a hatchet for a mouse. What is this? All right, I got the other part of whatever that is. Yeah, this is another piece of uh, metal. Yeah. I keep finding these fragments all around. All right, so Charlie was saying this was something that would get snow off of roofs or would be on a roof. Um, I didn't catch all of that story. I was like running, and I'm sorry, Charlie. I was like running back to the field to get something. Um, you know, get, <laughs> I don't get to dig on ground like this very often. So um, the audience, if you guys know what this is, I know it has something to do with roofs. He said something about snow. Just let me know. Okay, this is phenomenal, absolutely by, phenomenal by the power lines. 
That is, okay, go. Ah, copper wire. Okay. Something deep in the hole. Ah. Might have a shot bullet here. Now you've seen me pull mercury dimes a million times and uh, this image kind of symbolizes the kind of day that I was having. I'm sure that was like a raccoon or something like that. Dead. <laughs> That's uh, what was symbolic. But uh, the time was ticking down and I had to make an executive decision. I was going to move towards the power lines. 65. I think we got another buckle. We did, we got another buckle. It's here, come on. All right, we're finding some spots. Jumpy and deep. Okay. We are on the button. There we go, first button of the day. I want to be absolutely clear and consistent. I am not seeing a huge difference when it comes to depth with the Manticore compared to the Equinox, but it does have its quirks. Definitely with smaller targets, you'll get a little bit deeper. The th biggest advantage that I've seen with the Manticore is if you want to use it in areas where there is EMI. I was able to go pretty much right around the electric poles and uh, it was barely affected. Got something. Conductive target trace has it as an oval. That seems to be surface. Okay, right in here. Oh, I see it. Look at that. That's a good sign right there. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, one dime. One dime. It's a barber. It's a barber. I think that's 1900. There we go. On the board. Okay. There we go. It's amazing what a little piece of silver does for your day. 1908. And Denver Mint. Cool. For the record, it's in the section where there is this electric going through. So I don't know if there's something to it. Everybody else is kind of far away. Um, this got to be something that is close to the electric. This sounds pretty loud. I have a feeling it's going to be a can. <laughs> yeah, it's in here. Yeah, it sure is. Let's go. This is too good to be true. Too good to be true. No, it's not. Look at this. We just got a brass ring. That's really cool. Okay. And that was deep too. Let's go. Good section. Again, we are right in the middle of Power Lineville. Uh, let's keep going. Places like that, Lou and I could have dug forever, but we had to get to dinner with the family. All right, let's do a wrap up. Two knives, two farms. Tom's got two knives. Tom. Whoa, Mr. Whoa. Tones. All right, let me see. I'm going to put my bag down. You said this is your first copper? I think it's my first yeah, copper. All right. Copper Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's thin. If you clean it up, maybe you can. Yeah, the light's not helping. I'm not very good with the light. More feisty? Yes, yes. Thank you. I hope you need the light too, but that'll help you. I'm pretty, too strong. pretty blind. Bill's the man of the two real today. Thank you, brother.
Thank you for the two we are. You're welcome, Charles. Well, so the least I could do for you. Bill was kind enough to I sat on Eric Howard. He Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That, so. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome, buddy. You gotta, uh, could you, oh yeah, you said you sent me a picture. Congratulations. Thank you. We're here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Look at that hand carved. Yeah. I, I, I wish that one was intact because that's so cool the way that's made. You know what I mean? The most humbling thing is like we, we go crazy about 200 year old coins. This is so much older. Crazy to think about. Yeah, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I didn't do too Makes good on the detective front in front today. But... All right, fun day. I have what I think these are. As far as I'm concerned, I found them. <laughs> but there was one last problem to solve. Some kind of cosmonaut? <laughs> cockroach on top of that. Yeah, the, 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 this is. Uh, you, you didn't get any uh, dirt on your knees, though. Oh, I, I was doing the catcher. Position. You were doing the catcher? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm trying to stay as clean as possible, so I walk in the hotel. That's my problem. I'm gonna walk into the hotel like this. Oh man! Just tell them you fell. I will tell them that I fell. That's yeah, a good solution. I fell. I fell. That's a good solution. There was a beautiful sunset before the mud man so had to walk into the hotel. Who, who brought who brought the cool people <laughs> good times